Minutes from now, the Benghazi Select Committee holds that deposition, top of the hour. They want answers about email exchanges with then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton about the security situation in Libya a year and a half before the Benghazi attack. The book is called Clinton Cash. And that revealed Blumenthal was on the Clinton Foundation's payroll and had financial interests in Libya. And there was apparently a lot of correspondence back and forth. Peter Schweitzer wrote the book. He's my guest again today out of Tallahassee, Florida. And thanks for coming back this week, Peter. Good morning. Thanks Good morning to you. Um, Catherine Harridge reports 60 emails were given over last night, about 180 pages in length. I think it's easy to get lost in a lot of these details. But why is Sidney Blumenthal? important to this story, Peter? Uh, that's a great question, Bill. Uh, Sid Blumenthal was originally a style reporter at the Washington Post who really entered the Clinton inner circle in the 1990s during the impeachment hearings. He was a very strong defender of the Clintons, and he entered their inner circle. And ever since then, he's been a sounding board, a close political aide. He was put on the payroll of the Clinton Foundation. So he wanted to have a senior position in Hillary Clinton's State Department, but that was refused by the Obama White House because he's seen as a guy, let's say, with very, very sharp elbows, and they just didn't want him there. Why is he important to this story? He is a close confidant to the Clintons. The emails indicate that he is sending uh, sensitive intelligence information. Some of it's accurate, some of it's not. That he's providing advice. Uh, and that he had a motive or an incentive to provide certain information to her because he also had these commercial ties with companies that wanted contracts in Libya. So it goes to the heart of this whole issue of blurring the official duties that Hillary Clinton had as the State Department with the Clinton Foundation and sort of the so, political so ba aides Peter, that, that are always around. Based on that, when you get to the question about what would be in their correspondence, well, Everything and anything could be in their correspondence. So what, what, where was he getting his information? And what did she do well, with that's that information? Right. right. I mean, those are great questions, but we don't know all the answers to that. We do know that he was paid at the Clinton Foundation, that he obviously was using that perch to gather information in the emails that have been released. Uh, the indications are he's getting these from foreign intelligence sources. I don't know what that exactly means. A lot of it was dismissed when Secretary Clinton forwarded those emails to, uh, you know, the Assistant Secretary of State, for example. A lot of that information was dismissed. But this is all totally relevant to U.S. foreign policy and national security. And if these were deleted by Hillary Clinton on the grounds that they were personal, uh, there's no stretch that, that you can make uh, that allows these to be personal. These go to the heart of the decision she's making as Secretary well, of State as it relates to Libya. And on that point, when you look at the situation in Libya today, it has only gotten worse. And who knows the state of that country a year and a half from now. And th that all becomes relevant when you want to be the next president of the United States, having looked back on the decisions you made to get rid of a dictator that people, frankly, did not like, especially in the United States of America. Yeah, I mean, Libya right now, I think nobody would argue... Uh fact that it's a disaster and it's sort of a classic example of we pursued an aggressive policy to overthrow this dictator you can say that was good you can say that was bad the problem is there was no backup follow-up plan and so you've got a very strategic part of the world lots of oil produced there strategic location geographically that's in absolute chaos and seems to be a breeding ground for other terrorist organizations it's okay. a very troubling situation indeed the last question here and I got to make it quick what do you think Gowdy finds in this investigation? I, I think they're going to find that there are even more emails than these that have been turned over. Uh, that's what I think, that, that there's far more interchange of information here than, than people really expected. If it exists, right? I mean, it could yeah. be gone, <laughs> could be deleted, right? right? That's not a stretch, is right. it? No, it's not. Although in this case, what's curious to me is that his attorney, Sid Blumenthal's attorney, turns this over on the eve of the hearings. Clearly, they were concerned that he might perjure himself, so they wanted to get the information there in advance. I bet one of the first questions that he's going to be asked is, are there other emails that you have not turned over? And that's where it's going to get really dicey for Sid Blumenthal. All right. From Tallahassee, Florida, Peter Schweitzer, thanks for coming back with us today. Thank you.